Hey folks, welcome to The Game Plan. My name is Gareth Soloway and this is VerifiedInvesting.com. So we have some interesting action. The stock market after bouncing a little bit yesterday is starting to kind of come back down. We saw overnight yields popping close to my target of 4.6%. The dollar at one point was also pushing up, but has since reversed. And that's really the name of the game here. Right now, the markets care about yields and the dollar. Those strength matters. That strength is important to the market. So let's get right into it right here. Let's take a look what we have. Right here is a chart of the U.S. 10-year yield. Now look at this, folks. This is a target that I gave you guys just uh, yesterday. We talked about this target price up here. Bear with me as I got some lines on the screen. Right there, that is your upside target, 4.6%. Look at how close we got. We are seeing yields beginning to reverse. Now, it's important to understand what's going on here, folks. You now have 700 banks with more real estate exposure on the commercial side than is recommended, meaning they are over leveraged. The fact that rates continue to go up means these banks are going to get more and more stressed. In my opinion, you're going to see more bank failures. It's almost inevitable. So again, rates up here is again, a good thing to control inflation, but there are things in the underworkings of the economy that are not built for rates to be this high anymore. And that's where you get breakages. That's where you get black swan events. So always remember that. It's not that rates shouldn't be up here. Honestly, they probably should. But again, when you have a system built on a house of cards with a government that spends money left and right without any checks and balances, when the private sector has just continued to spend money as well, building up massive, massive debts, consumers, trillion plus dollar debts, mortgage rates, all of these things. This is where you get breaks and why I continue. And I've said this, listen, since the markets were at their recent 52 week highs, I have come to you and I have said, you have to be careful in this market. And it does not change here. If in fact, with rates higher, you have to be even more careful. All right, so what I see on this chart here, I put in the RSI. I, this is RSI, I use it for divergences. I wanna teach you a little bit about that today. So what I wanna show you here is take a look at how you have a trend line right here, right? So a trend line also giving us resistance right around this level up here. And then look at the RSI. Basically, the RSI has flatlined. To me, that is telling me there's a divergence here in the RSI, and it is a negative divergence. In, a, in theory, the RSI should have the same upside move like this as yields are having. It does not. That, again, is telling me that you're getting ready for a pullback in yield. So, again, I don't use RSI, and I want to be clear on this. You know, RSI above 70 is considered overbought under 30 is oversold, that should mean nothing to you. I have seen charts that have stayed below 30 for months at a time and gone lower. It's the divergences that are a factor in your analysis. Okay, so very clearly, what are we talking about here on the chart of the 10-year? I expect the 10-year, maybe it touches 4.6% or not, but either way, it got within about 0.04%. And my expectation is a retrace down to this level here. So you're looking for it to come back to about 4.35%. Now, the question is, will that give the market a bid? Normally, I would say yes, but I wonder what is happening. I get the sense that under the underlying economy, things are starting to crumble. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear about bank failures over the next couple days, or maybe the Federal Reserve is going in already and kind of cushioning the blows here to help save them. How many banks are too big to fail? We don't know at this point, but I'm telling you right now, banks were not in a position to assume rates were gonna go above 4.5% on the 10 year. And there are banks that are literally walking zombie banks, walking zombie banks out there. And that again, whether the Fed and the government bail them out, I don't know, but I do know that again, if not, you have trillions of dollars that literally can go into default. And listen, we're not even talking about the refinances. Some of these banks have literally in the next couple of years, $1.5 trillion. They need to refinance at crazy higher rates than what they had right now. All right. So on to the next chart here. I want to get into the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar, again, folks, is probably the other most important thing 
in relation to the overall market conditions. And by the way, when I talk about market conditions, I'm talking about crypto, I'm talking about stocks, I'm talking about commodities, I'm talking about currencies. It all plays together. What we see and continue to see is that this is my channel that I've had for you guys on the US dollar. Very clear, we have this area right here. We have this, this, and this, and we are hitting the upper band of it. Okay, so to me, I'm saying to you, and this is the weekly dollar chart, we have now had two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 straight up weeks. Now think probability-wise, all right? When you've had 11 straight up weeks in anything, what is the probability you're gonna get a 12th and a 13th and a 14th straight up, up week? And the answer is the probability start to diminish. If you look at past charts, here you had some green candles, one, two, three, four, five, six, and down, right? One, two, three, down. One, two, three, pause, one, two, and then down, right? So if you think about it, you have to say to yourself, okay, the dollar is hitting resistance. We have a very clear resistance point. And if I use my logical brain, not emotional, but logical brain, it starts to tell us that probabilities are favoring a pullback, a plus we have resistance. Now, if we look at the RSI, does the RSI in this situation tell us anything? And the answer is not really. All right, not really. The only thing the RSI told us here is you had a short-term positive divergence on the RSI here, which told us we were gonna have this bigger run. And what I mean by that is you had this point and this point, and you had this point and this point. So positive divergence, RSI was going up, and it told us there was another push up coming in the US dollar. The US dollar did do that, now it's in alignment right there with again, price moving up. All right, so again, just something interesting to kind of take a note there, but overall the RSI in this situation is not telling me anything, it's more so this weekly chart that to me tells me we're coming into resistance. All right, quickly flipping over to the S&P 500. The S&P 500 did stage a little bit of a bounce yesterday. I thought it was interesting because the dollar was stronger and yields were stronger yesterday, but the market still had a little bit of a bounce. The only negatives to the market yesterday, the volume was light. And anytime you have light volume, we know that the buy the dippers, the retail crowd tends to jump in and they're the ones that are lifting the market. So again, yes, it was a bounce, but I'm still a little bit skeptical, especially seeing today's price action in the markets. Now, as I look at this chart, we have a very clear head and shoulder break that I've discussed, right? We've broken it. It's often common after you break to retest back to that neckline and then go lower. Right now, we're not even really doing more than just yesterday's bounce. We're all already starting to come back to the downside. But my point is that this now becomes your next level of support. And we're talking right here. There's a gap fill right in this level as well. Bear with me. Let me go back to the chart and so I can draw this on for you. So again, I have a couple levels to watch. My first level on the chart here is going to be right in this range right here. 421, this trend line, and this level here, which is a gap fill and pivot. And then really, if you go over here, you're basically right to that area right here, this pivot top as well. So I'm looking at potential downside to about 420 to 421 on the SPY. All right, speaking of this stuff, guys, check this out. This is pretty awesome. If we flip back here and I flip over to the Russell, do you guys remember that Russell alert that I gave you guys yesterday? I literally spent multiple time, and let me get rid of that, uh, multiple minutes talking about if the Russell opened into this level or tagged this level, it was a buy yesterday. And if you took this opportunity yesterday, you made some amazingly good fast cash. So again, the thought process was oversold, coming into this area right here, which happens to be this gap fill. We have this upsloping trend line. The Russell yesterday opened right at that level and ripped higher. That was a nice move yesterday on the Russell. I know some people messaged me, they said they got that trade. I love hearing that. Remember, I do short-term trades. This isn't a long-term buy, this is literally, you, you take a gap fill, you bank it, you say thank you very much for the cash. All right, so awesome there. If we go to the QQQ real quick, the Q's here, guys, bear with me there as I get rid of that chart there. And so basically what we have is the Q's are sitting just on support or just above support. Right now, I think we're gonna come back down. We're likely gonna break this line here. So I would expect a move lower in the Q's down to this level here over the next week or two. 
And again, that's going to bring you into major technical support here. And if we go all the way back here, there's a major pivot point just off the screen. So you're looking for about a 330 to 332 handle on the QQQ as your next technical support. All right, jumping over here, let's go on over here, guys. The chart I have up right now is the chart of uranium. Uranium has had a monster breakout. Okay, this is a breakout I actually highlighted in my metals on the move, uh, basically little series that I'm doing, as well as we've talked about it in here. Now, the key about this, guys, is, again, look at the wedge pattern, beautiful wedge pattern here, here, and here, and then we broke out, but look at where we're coming into. If we look at the chart, we have to be realistic, right? So let me go back to uranium here. Okay, so if we go to this point, look at where we are coming into on uranium. You're starting to get very close to resistance right up there. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, in the scheme of things, what that means is you're gonna get, we're running out of steam. So think about it like this, right? You've already run a marathon and then you're asked to use any energy left to try to break through a wall right up here. You're exhausted, you've run 26 plus miles, right? You're very, very tired, you've had a huge run. So what are the probabilities that you're gonna be able to just go right through that? And honestly, probably not great. You need to take a break, you need to do what's, cons what's called consolidation, which is kind of back test a little bit here before making that mech move up. That's how charts work. Weirdly enough, charts work very much like human beings do. Now, again, makes kind of sense because human beings are the ones that are buying and selling, thus creating the charts. So it makes sense. It almost follows the same nature as us, which is greed and fear, right? Greed and fear. And after a big run, people are like, tired. I'm tired. I just had a big run. I need to take a break here. So that's oftentimes what you'll see. I would estimate that while I think the long-term thesis on uranium makes a lot of sense, I've said this before, I'll say it again, is that there's no way we can do enough alternate energy to supply the world's energy needs. Therefore, you're eventually gonna have to go back to nuclear power if we wanna solve this climate change issue. And ultimately, that means uranium is gonna go higher, in my opinion. And I think, again, you just are looking for a pullback here. Now, in terms of a pullback, where would I be a buyer of this? So we talked about the breakout. And by the way, the breakout played exactly like it should. Now, one of the things I talk about is when you have a breakout, and let's use this, right? So here's a chart moving up. It hits the level, it pulls back, and then breaks out. When it breaks out, charts have a tendency, about a seven to eight times out of 10, 70 to 80% chance of retracing to the scene of the crime. I never chase a chart. When I see a breakout, I'm not buying here or here or here. That's too extended already. It's already gone up too much. What I do is I end up looking and saying, okay, well, let's wait for the retrace. Now, this is one of the hardest things to do in, in, in any chart, crypto, stocks, whatever, because what you're doing is you're saying, I'm not going to chase up here, which your emotion is telling you to do. You're being told, your brain is like, oh, your heart is just saying, man, I don't want to miss this trade. Everything, you know, telling me, my guts, my, my, my friends, my social media, everywhere I go, this is a big breakout, but I have to hold my horses. I have to say, whoa, slow down. And basically, the reason is because, again, it's already extended. You never chase. The best traders in the world are leaders. We lead. We don't chase. So what do you do? You basically do this. You wait for the retrace right there, back to the scene of the crime. You'll hear that term that I say all the time, scene of the crime. The crime being, obviously, it's not really a crime, but you broke out. That was your break out of jail right there. Break out of jail. You return. Check it out. That's where you buy right there. You get a much better entry price. And more importantly, this is the cool thing, right? Check this out. Not only are you getting a better entry than if you chased up here, but you're also keeping your stop tighter, which is really important. Minimizing losses is really hard to do, but it is really important in trading. And so by waiting for the retrace, basically if you're buying here and it closes back in here, you exit the trade. Now, if you bought up here and it closes, look at how big your loss is there versus if you bought here and it closes here, your loss is so tiny. It's like tiny, tiny. You guys probably can't even see it on the screen there. So that again is another reason why waiting for the retrace is important. Now, again, like I said, where is uranium coming back to? Very simply put, look at that. Pivot point, pivot point, pivot point. I would look for a retrace back to just below 24, maybe 23.50 on this, 
and then that's your buy for probably another move to the upside. All right, let's continue on, guys. Enough about uranium here. Let's go to gold. Gold again, doing its thing here. Uh, it is pulling back today on gold, but it's staying in this very tight band. So here was a bigger band, right? All right, then it broke out, and now it's in this very tight band. Eventually, I think it breaks above here, and that's where you get your next big move to the all-time high right up here. So again, everything on gold, consider, I mean, again, you guys remember that chart I just showed you on the dollar, how it had 11, it's on the 11th straight up week in a row. All right, so let's talk about divergences, all right? If you just want to simplify what a divergence is, right? And we have the RSI down here, but let's forget the RSI. Let's just talk about divergences. If the dollar goes like this, which is what it's done, what should gold be doing? Well, we know that gold trades inverse to the dollar. Gold should be going like that. All right, so if it's this sharp of a move up, gold should be going down like this. What we're seeing in gold is basically, let me erase that, okay? So the dollar has gone like this, right? This is the dollar straight up. Gold has gone like this. All right, that to me is a positive divergence. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's telling me that big money, and by the way, it's not even that it's telling me, the central banks are telling us. Central banks are the biggest buyers right now of gold. They are loading their war chests up because you know what they know? They know what we all fear, which is eventually they have to print money again. And they know, and just like the Federal Reserve knows, it's like, look at this. Think about the economy. Right now, we have positive GDP numbers. We're growing as a U.S. economy, and the deficit is keep, keeps going up. Now, think about this. The government is, tries to get our deficit to be lower by tax revenue. If right now we have a growth in the economy and they're making less money to the point where our deficit is skyrocketing, what happens when the Fed's work actually works and the economy slows down? Well, what we know is that all of a sudden tax receipts are going to go even lower, which means this deficit number is going to spike. Now, having said that, how does the government pay off all this debt at higher interest rates? Remember, 5% treasuries now. They're going to have to be paying 5% going forward. Now, granted, do interest rates come in a little bit? Yeah, eventually. But the point is, again, it is such a waste of money, and it's only going to increase the deficit unless something drastically changes. Okay, anyways, that was kind of my spiel on gold, but I do expect gold to break out, guys. I do ultimately expect I continue to be a fan of gold. I like gold not only because of the chart patterns, but also the safety in an uncertain period that we're entering here. Looking at silver real quick, guys, not a whole lot to discuss on silver. Silver simply has this chart pattern here, this chart pattern here. It's kind of in this same band, if you will. Eventually, do I think it's going to break out? Probably, but again, gold is my pure play. Silver's a little harder to gauge because of the industrial side there. All right, a couple other charts I want to go over. we got to talk about oil here. If we go to the oil chart, we have oil, which peaked right here. Remember, in this game plan, I told you guys, oil was a short. Now, what do we see? Oil pulling back. Now, what's amazing about this is that it's pulled back and is now starting to make what I call a bear flag. It's a standard bear flag. You got the down move, now you're going sideways like this. You go in a textbook and you look, and what does this show, right? Shows the chart, and then the breakdown like that. It's almost identical. I think oil is still going lower, guys. I know everyone else out there is like, oil going to $120 a barrel. I don't buy it. I think, again, I wouldn't be surprised if this next jobs number next Friday is going to be very poor on the number. Okay, and again, I think you're going to start to see a very sharp decline in the economy. I know I've thought that actually for a few months and it hasn't happened. I've been perplexed, but I do think there's a lag effect here that eventually is coming to fruition. All right, Bitcoin. Let's talk a little Bitcoin real quick, just looking at the chart here. By the way, I want to show you the divergence on this. By the way, I hate having the moving average on the RSI. Not a huge deal, but I'm going to just remove it real quick here. You guys can see me do it as base. There we go. We get rid of that. All right. I like the pureness of just having the RSI, no extra lines. Keep it simple, guys. I barely use indicators the way it is. I would strongly advise being cautious. Look at this. See the drop here? And then look at RSI right here. Okay? And then look at how we made a lower low here than over here when we were at these lows. But the RSI was higher. 
So that again, lower move, higher RSI, look at that. And what happens to price? It moves up. So there was a small positive divergence in the RSI dictating a little move up. And then I gave you guys this level and I said, this is gonna be resistance and sure enough it is. Now the question is, we're getting into this period where we're getting in this wedge pattern, right? Down sloping orange line like this, flat sloping bottom, price again, which way is it gonna go? Now the one thing we have to remember is that by mid October, we should have news on spot ETFs. Now the big thing, like I said yesterday, is if we get a spot ETF approved, which by the way, I think it's 50-50. I actually do think it's 50-50. Price will pop, but again, for it to matter to me, price has to take out the 32,000 level. If, if price, if we get a spot ETF and price does not take out this high, that's not good. And to me, that would be a very, very bearish indicator. All right, let's flip back over here, guys. Just jumping back to this chart here, I wanna just show you guys a couple final things here. Um, a couple things on the radar here as we get through into the final things. I do like this one chart here. I always try to bring one new chart to you guys that I like. And the chart is getting very close to a major support. The chart is PayPal. And if we zoom out on this, we can see this. And in fact, maybe if I go to my weekly, I can zoom in a little bit more. By the way, look at this chart. I mean, that is a nutty chart. But more importantly, I don't care what the chart looks like. I want to see the chart technicals. And what we can see here is that we have a very key pivot point, pivot point, pivot point, and we're just about, we had another one here, we're just about back down to that line. So you're looking at a price point, in my opinion, that gets interesting right around $56, $57. We're just above that now, maybe we get down there, but this starts to look interesting to me. And then you also have this, which right now will work as resistance, but if you can break out above it, it frees it from jail, essentially. You start to get that big move to the upside. So again, just something to think about. It is an interesting chart. Again, close to the viable level here on this chart. Obviously, make sure, and again, folks, you have to make your own decisions. I always say that. It's all about your own decisions. Make it smart, diversify, very, very important. Okay, I will say this, guys. Number one, I thank each and every one of you guys for watching because you freaking rock. The fact that these numbers continue to go up for this stream means the world to me, and I thank you for spreading the good word. I thank you for all the kind comments that you have given to me on these different stream platforms where I go live. And I want to say this. I enjoy these because I know you guys enjoy them, and that means a lot to me. So keep telling me again some kind words. It drives me to bring you guys the best alpha in the world. Follow Verified Investing on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Follow us on uh, on YouTube. I will continue to bring you guys top-notch analysis. Thank you for tuning into the game plan today. I'll see you tomorrow.